South Sudan. Your Excellency, my elder sister Samia Sulu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency, Lieutenant General Davis Ndira Kubosha, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Burundi. Your Excellency, Jakaya Kikwete, former President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency, Baba Olesogun Obasanjo, former President of the Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, retired General James Kabarebe, Minister for State for Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Rwanda, Ambassadors, High Commissioners, Heads of Delegations, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. I am honored to have this opportunity to extend on behalf of the people of Kenya a warm welcome to each and every one of you and to thank you for making time out of your busy schedules to attend this historic event. We do not take it for granted that you found time to come. On the contrary, your visit honors our nation greatly. It is therefore an immense privilege to host all of you as we assemble in Nairobi to announce Kenya's nomination of the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga as candidate for the position of chairperson of the Africa Union Commission. Your Excellencies, our meeting today underscores our shared commitment to regional solidarity and integration in East Africa and our determination to mobilize effective collective action for the benefit of the citizens of our countries and the entire African continent. Our East African region, which is home to more than 500 million people, rightly considers this moment to be its turn to offer leadership on the basis of the principle of inter-regional rotation. I am encouraged by the fact that more than ever, our region's leadership is alive to the complexity and dynamism of the challenges which form the regional and broader international context of our Pan-African moment. These challenges range from political instability and associated governance issues, conflict and insecurity together with related humanitarian tragedies, cross-border and international crime, including various forms of illegal trafficking in drugs, arms and persons. Others include climate change, whose effects have trapped many countries in the difficult place between extreme drought on one hand and devastating floods on another. Equally encouraging is our firm shared understanding that this context is incomplete if we do not pay attention to the global implications of an African continent that is undeniably on the rise, powered by an unprecedented demographic dividend and equally incomparable environment of natural resources, including critical minerals and renewable energy potential, which are vital for a future that is going to be underpinned by sustainable green growth. Our Pan-African moment, ladies and gentlemen, must be defined by the transformation of our collective capacity to solve our various crises and turn our potential into engines of sustainable growth and inclusive prosperity for present and future generations. In other words, the time has come for Africa to radically recalibrate its institutions to effectively facilitate growth and development across a broad range of spheres, thereby enlarging the field of possibilities of our nations and also our peoples. To seize this moment, we need an African Union that can coordinate, oversee, and drive important continental agenda in a manner that brings Agenda 2063 onto the fastest delivery track. 
This will be an AU that is empowered with adequate diplomatic, security, governance, financial, technological, and even ecological leadership, and a management capacity to steer us rapidly beyond the sustainable development goals to Africa that we all want for the benefit of every nation and every African citizen. The feeling that Africa is ripe for this historic moment of radical transformation is shared by all our people and all our friends. Nothing stops us from moving into the necessary gear to claim our destiny. And this is why institutional reforms at the Africa Union are fundamentally essential. This understanding of the monumental possibilities before us and the urgency of our historic moment was underscored here in Nairobi when at the close of the inaugural Africa Climate Summit, the continent's leaders announced a new transformative agenda under the Africa Leaders Nairobi Declaration on Climate Change and Call, and call to Action. Among many significant pronouncements, the Nairobi Declaration emphasized the imperative of just, inclusive, equitable, and fair multilateral institutional architecture as a fundamental prerequisite for us to transform our immense potential into inclusive opportunities and sustainable prosperity for all of us. Fellow African leaders agreed at the summit that this would be by enabling our continent to industrialize for the world while also decarbonizing it using our abundant human, mineral, energy, and natural resources. The Honorable Raila Odinga has spoken extensively on the same. To actualize this ambition, the transformation must begin here at home in our continental institutions. Africa must aim at greater self-reliance and a more pronounced role in global governance. For this to happen, reliable and predictable resources to implement the Africa Union goals of sustainable development and deeper integration are necessary. To this end, I want to promise Kenya is firmly committed to upholding the Kigali decision and will remain a strong contributor to the AU budget as a pioneer in implementing the 0.2% levy on eligible imports. The evolving global landscape requires us to discard outdated principles, practices, and institutional arrangements in order to embrace new opportunities. It is a fact that our continent is now a significant global player and we must leverage this enhanced profile to our advantage. The success of our transformation will be measured in terms of the relevance and effectiveness of our policies in transforming Africa from the ground up. Moreover, to give all our people and nations a fair chance to seize emerging opportunities, the task of addressing the persistent problems of state fragility and forgotten conflicts while boosting humanitarian efforts must further escalate significantly as a critical priority for all of us. Accordingly, Kenya has committed significant resources to processes aimed at achievement of peace and stability in our region, including in Sudan, in Sudan and also in Somalia. The complicated challenges arising from the prevailing geopolitical environment, including the impacts of war in the Middle East and Eastern Europe, and the growing threats to cyber security at a time when humanity is increasingly reliant on technology and connectivity, which have intensified the dynamism and complexity of the operating environment of our institutions and require a flexible approach to technology and security. These are interventions that require leadership. 
our commitment to strengthening multilateralism from regional to global levels remain steadfast. Kenya has already stepped up to enhance its contribution to Africa's development by championing institutional reform at the Africa Union. We believe that offering a highly qualified, experienced, and competent candidate to lead the Africa Union Commission is perfectly consistent with our commitment to the transformation of our continent through our institution of Pan-African unity. The Honorable Raila Odinga is a celebrated statesman whose longevity in leadership has been sustained by an unrelenting devotion to democratic change as the foundation of sustainable freedom and prosperity. Kenya has benefited from progress both on the broad stage of national governance as well as the evolution of specific sectors that are attributable to reforms championed by the patriotic lead of indomitable visionaries, among them the Honorable Raila Odinga. I want to say the Honorable Raila Odinga possesses the professional capacity and experience, a proven track record of transformative leadership, and a wide experience of accomplishments at the national and regional levels. Furthermore, the Honorable Raila Odinga enjoys a sterling reputation as a zealous Pan-African who has consistently demonstrated a strong faith in Africa's possibilities and exemplary commitment to the cause of laying a robust foundation for Africa's transformation in our time. Therefore, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I know that Honorable Raila not only possesses the requisite credentials, but he is also the ideal candidate to lead the Africa Union Commission. Accordingly, Kenya endorses his candidature and reservedly. And, and we commit wholeheartedly to support his candidature, his vision, and his leadership. He embodies extensive experience and a deep understanding of both African affairs and global dynamics, which are crucial for leading the African Union further into the center of global affairs and closer to the hearts of the African people. Excellencies, I present to you a visionary Pan-African, a bold and wise leader, a professional and technocrat, as well as a towering statesman and a veteran mobilizer for positive change. I am confident that he will give his utmost and do all it takes to make Africa proud and Africa powerful. I think the lion story is up. To assist In making the case for Honorable Obama candidature, I also made the Secretariat, which will be led by Kenya's Foreign Affairs Principal Secretary, Horis Tsunoye, and Ambassador Elkana Odemi. It will also include a diverse membership drawn from five regions of the Africa Union. The assignment we are called upon to undertake at the Africa Union Commission is the work of all Africans, for all Africans, and a noble cause to bring our peoples and nations in touch with the promise of the glorious future we all deserve. A new chapter in our common journey has begun. 
we shall travel on this road to freedom and democracy, stability and security, peace and prosperity with all our people, all our leaders, governments, and with all our partners throughout the world. And I'm happy that the global community is represented here by our ambassadors. We take this assignment very seriously and we have entrusted it to our most capable steward. On behalf of the people of Kenya, I wish the Honorable Raila Odinga success as he makes his case to be elected as the chairperson of Africa Union Commission. I am highly indebted to each and every one of you heads of state, leaders of delegation, and friends for taking part in this historic event for Kenya, for East Africa, and it's my prayer that the Honorable Raila Odinga will be elected the chair of the Africa Union Commission. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless our East African region. And God bless our continent, Africa. Now it's my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to request um, a few people to make uh, some remarks. Then I will ask uh, my colleagues, heads of state, to make their remarks as well. Let me ask, uh, by way of beginning, uh, General Retired James Kabarebe from Rwanda to come and make uh, very brief remarks. Welcome, my friend. Come and make it here.